This is Chuck Johnson, and I'm here to show you. So here I am at Spartan Krav Maga in Lansing, Michigan. I'm back in the States visiting family, and I thought this would be a great opportunity to cover something that we don't necessarily get in a lot of martial arts classes or in a lot of martial arts content, which is carjacking defense. If you're living in the States or if you're living in Canada, chances are you're probably driving a lot. To if you own cars, you may run the risk of this happening, and as such, we always want to prepare for everything, so I think we should prepare for this as well. So um, I wanted to work with Spartan Krav Maga because you know, this is the area that my mom lives in, for starters, so it's, it's close to my house. <laughs> and then beyond that, you know, in visiting the school, I was very, very impressed with the instructors here. Both of them come from law enforcement's background, and one of them, Cedric, also comes from a military background. So these guys have a lot of uh, experience dealing with very real situations where they've had to defend themselves, so they know their stuff very, very well. And I'm actually working with them right now to develop a Krav Maga course for www.curious.com. If you'd like to check it out, here's a link that will show you how to check out the course. And in addition, also let you try it out for a discount. So if you're interested and you wanna try out the course, you can use a little code at the bottom to give yourself a discount on it, okay? So anyway, without further ado, let's meet our instructors and let's take a look. All right, so here we are in Chuck's super bad brand new Lincoln MKC. Man, quit playing, Chuck. You said this is your mama's ride. Um, no, uh uh. Man, come I, on, I man. I didn't say that. Uh uh. Get out of Chuck's mouth. <laughs> okay, so these are my good friends Cedric and Justin. They are the instructors here at Spartan Krav Maga, and they're going to be working with me to do this carjacking defense video. So obviously these guys know what they're doing and given by the size of them, I wouldn't mess with either one of them. <laughs> okay, so before we get started on the carjacking scenario, do you guys have anything that you'd like to add in? Yeah, when it comes to carjacking, um, we're gonna show you a couple techniques that you can use if you're stopped at a red light or maybe you're parked and your car's already turned off. Uh, one, one option that you always have is just to drive away. If you have the ability just to hit the gas and drive away safely, then do so. But again, if you're stopped at a red light and you're, you know, let's say behind another car and you can't get away, uh, we're, we're going to show you a technique or two that will hopefully help you and keep you alive. Right on. I'd say the best thing is, is that the awareness factor and avoidance factor. If you can avoid that situation in the first place, we want to do that. Um, you know, if you, can, if you know that's an area that's prone to high carjacking, the very, very best defense you can have is to avoid that area if at all possible. Um, but when all else fails, you have Krav Maga. Absolutely. Okay. And guys, that goes back to something that I talked about, you know, myself when I talk about the levels of self-defense. Okay. So first level of self-defense is to not let yourself get into those kinds of situations to begin with, or if, if possible, you know, stay away from areas that are going to be conflict prone or that are going to be likely to lead you to conflict. Okay. So then that just, you know, goes, goes right into exactly what Justin was saying. Okay. All right. So let's get to it. Get out of the car, get out of the car. Break it down! <laughs> okay, as we discussed before, carjacking. Um, obviously, if I can drive off in a safe way, I'm gonna drive off. Um, if I'm stopped at a red light and a car's in front of me and I can't safely take off, or maybe there's you know uh, a bicyclist or a pedestrian walking in front of me and I just can't hit the gas, here's, here's an option. So I'm just stopped at a red light possibly, he walks up, I see the gun. As soon as I see this gun, I need to redirect it, okay? I redirect it by taking the hand that's closest to the weapon and getting it away from me. I'm just punching straight out, keeping this arm blocked out. From there, my second hand is going to come underneath the firearm. So now I have control of this weapon. And even if the weapon goes off, I'm out of the line of fire. So now I have control of this weapon. I have two hands on this weapon versus his one. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go for the disarm, and I do that by inflicting pain. Boom. Boom. Down on the uh, car door, the frame of the car. If his hand is in, if his hand is in deeper, I can hit it on the steering wheel. If it's in deeper, all right. So I'm come down, hit that, releasing the grip, bring it straight to my core, keeping the muzzle away from me. From here, since I'm left-handed, I'm gonna put the gun in my strong hand. If you're right-handed, it'd be your right hand. And I'm gonna tap the magazine and rack the slide. 
because um, I'm gonna expect this weapon is it's gonna it's gonna malfunction because it just switched hands and plus I, w I had my hand wrapped around the slide so that in a nutshell is how to uh, protect yourself against the carjack so another thing I want to add in too guys is uh, if you'll notice when Cedric did that redirect he didn't redirect it towards me in the back seat because I was here you know what I'm saying? He didn't redirect it behind him, and he didn't redirect it towards his passenger either. He redirected it out that way, so that, if, if, so that there's no one in his car, none of his loved ones are actually within the line of fire. And I think that's another important point to keep in mind. Okay? Uh, yes, and Chuck's ab absolutely right. So if Chuck were here in the passenger seat, or I had someone, let's say a, a young child that was in a car seat back here, I'd have to be very cognizant of point of, of redirecting that weapon. So if Justin comes in again, and I know that there's no one behind me in this back seat, okay, I could redirect here this way, and then from here it's the same thing. Your your opposite hand comes underneath. I'm gonna smash it down. All right, put the weapon in my dominant hand, tap the magazine, make sure it's seated properly, and rack it to, to make sure I get any malfunctions out of that out of that chamber. One more thing on this takeaway. So if this gun comes in. And uh, like I said before, I redirect the weapon, hand underneath, and I smash down. When I take this away, it's very important that this top hand is almost like um, uh, revving a, a motorcycle, okay? And this bottom hand is going to do the opposite. So it's like a um, pressure, counter pressure kind of thing. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that weapon away from him, breaking that grip, and bring it tight to my core, keeping the muzzle pointed away from me. If you notice, this weapon is designed to be held in a forward shooting position like this. That is designed to be held like this. When I break that grip, it's actually twisting the firearm in the hand so it makes it harder for him to hold on to that weapon. Just by doing that slight twist, it makes it easier for me to break his grip on that weapon. He comes in, I redirect the weapon, hand comes underneath. As I'm smashing his, his arm down, I'm twisting and pulling at the same time. Smash, twist, pull. Bringing that weapon to my core, again, the muzzle is pointed away from me. Tap, rack, and I reassess the uh, situation. I think the other thing that could, that could be done as well, and, you know, Cedric had mentioned this before when he mentioned driving away. I mean, you could just take their gun and then just drive away. <laughs> that is another option. So if, as long as, as you said, you know, there, if there's nobody in front of you, if you've, got a, if you've got a green light or whatever, or if you just don't have anything obstructing you from doing that, you could just take his weapon and run. I mean, I'm... I'm I'm, I'm just guessing here. You know? the, the only problem with that is, Justin, if I do this, I have to have at least one hand on the steering wheel to, to direct where the vehicle's going to go. Gotcha. Okay? So then if I hit the gas and do this, look what happens if, I, if this arm starts to bend. Oh, okay. Well, there you go. So if you're going to do that, make sure you get the weapon completely in your hands before you drive off with it. Okay? So don't do it with only one, half, one, uh, one hand on the weapon. So, okay. All right. Very cool. Very cool. Nice. Okay, so now guys, I'm gonna go ahead and try and go through this carjacking technique myself. So from here, and here, you'll notice guys that from here, I don't, um, Cedric had mentioned this earlier, I don't wanna have to reach all the way around like that because that would take too much time. And if Justin sees my arm moving like that, then for sure he's just gonna shoot me before I get a chance. So if I can, you know, as soon as that gun comes in, boom, I could be hands up here, something like that, and then from there, it's much easier to just go straight out with that hand. Then from there, other hand comes up and under. I get a good grip with both hands on the weapon. Boom, inflict pain to get him to let go. Rev the motorcycle, pull on the other side. Release the weapon. Hit the clip. Pull the slide. Reassess the situation. Okay? Looks good? Cedric, any comments? Good job. Okay, guys. So that's it on the carjacking video that I wanted to do. Okay, um, one more point that I wanted to make before we wrap up is that as you'll notice, as with a lot of the other techniques that I'm covering in this Krav Maga course, or a lot of the other techniques that I teach online or otherwise, it's really, really simple stuff. And the simpler it is, the easier it is, the better chance you have of being able to effectively utilize it when a chaotic situation comes at you or when a situation comes at you where you just don't have time to think. So it's very, very important that all of these techniques are simple and that's one reason that I really, really like this technique in particular, okay? Now, all that being said, um, as with any kind of fighting techniques, you know, whether it be knife defense, um, you know, stick defense, baseball bat defense, free hand defense, fighting techniques, you know, defense against a grab, 
doesn't matter. You are always, 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 always better off avoiding the situation where you'd have to use it or you know, working your way out of it, talking your way out of it, than actually utilizing the technique. Just because even if these techniques are good, they are not perfect, okay? No technique is perfect, okay? And as Cedric mentioned to me earlier, you, know, you win 100% of the fights that you can manage to avoid. So you're always better off avoiding the situation to begin with than having to fall back on these techniques. These techniques are always last ditch options, okay? So that's everything that I wanted to say. If you wanna check out the Krav Maga course that I'm making for Curious, again, here's the link. You can use the promo code at the bottom to get a discount. Um, otherwise, just stay tuned for other How to Defeat Dudes videos. This is Chuck, thanks for watching, and see you next time. Yosh!